Hello and welcome to the GLOW Conference of 2021 where we are growing leadership opportunities for women. Isn't that amazing? I would like to start with saying Happy New Year. Happy New Year to every one of you. Can you believe we've made it? Or should I say escaped the year of 2020? We all know that we have lived through a pandemic. We have lived through trials and error. We have lived through unemployment, some of us. Some of us have lived through um, the deaths of close loved ones. But guess what? We made it. And that in itself is a great feat. And all I'm asking you today are... Are you ready to glow? Are you ready to glow? Have you ever had anyone ask you, girl, what is going on with you? I mean, you glowing. And every time I was asked this, usually, usually I was pregnant. So what I'm saying today is, are you ready to glow? Because there is something on the inside of each of us that is about to be birthed this year and years to come. So get ready to glow, 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 glow. Not only glow, but let's get ready to grow. So my topic today is self-awareness, okay? Which totally means to grow in so many areas that have to do with our own personal values, our own beliefs, our own understanding, our habits, our emotions, um, our strengths, our weaknesses, being aware of these things. I'm able to motivate myself most of the time. And how am I able to motivate myself and manage stress? I manage my expectations. I manage my expectations. So self-awareness, when we speak of awareness, we speak of a consciousness that we have about a certain thing. And we are talking about us becoming more conscious of ourselves. I understand today that my audience is women. And if we have some other people, other men watching as well, you could take these tips and practical tools that we are speaking on today and apply them to yourself as well. However, I'm speaking today mostly to women in leadership. And I'm excited about this because we as women, we understand the the, the need to multiply. Whether we try to do it or not, whatever is given to us, we multiply on several levels. When it comes to understanding or building people, we are able to multiply whatever it is that they give us. But today I want to talk about self, what we are giving ourselves. Okay? It is hard so many times to give to ourselves when we have friends, family, parents, children, husbands, organizations, companies, all dependent on our skill set, all dependent on what it is that we have to bring to the table. And oftentimes, because we are so busy giving to other people, we forget to give to ourselves. So, today I want to ask another question. How far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go? T.S. Eliot He's, he's a poet, and he says, only those who will risk going too far will find out how far they can really go. So who is willing to take the risk to go as far as they can go? I know I am. I am so ready for 2021 after the year of 2020. Now, it does not mean that things stop for me. I was, I was constantly working and getting things done and trying to establish some things. Yet, I took a lot of time to rest, to reflect, to self-reflect and think about, am I satisfied with where I am? I remember there uh, reading a story about a psychologist um, at Harvard University, not only was he a psych, uh, professor or a psychologist, but he was an author of a book called Mindfulness. And he asked each of his students um, that had limited knowledge on a marathon, he asked each of them, he said, hey, how long do you think that a human can run 
in one spurt. So me not being aware of marathons running, although in my ideal self, I can run miles or will want to, but I'm talking about a person who can barely do three push-ups without losing her breath, but I'm working on it. That was one of my goals starting at the end of last year, and I'm going to continue to do it this year. But anyway, to answer that question, some of them said like 20 miles because, you know, they knew if he's asking this question, it must be further than, it, that, than they would think. So some of them said 20 miles, and some that knew a little bit about marathons, they knew that marathon running could be about 35 miles, like one of the largest um, marathons could be about 35 miles. However, the answer was 200 miles. 200 miles, someone was able to run in one spurt. And that, to me, is extremely amazing. We know that um, one mile is what about eight blocks so we talking about a lot of running okay so I'm reminded also about um, understanding that a lot of times when I think I just can't do anymore there is so much more that's in me have you ever been so tired and exhausted probably trying to do some papers or some writing or or trying to hit a deadline or finish something and complete it. But you're like, oh my God, I'm just so exhausted. But you knew that you had to get it done. Yet and still, there was some more in you. I'm reminded of another story that I read about the Navy SEALs and this training that they get. They go through tough, tough training, um, mental training, tough training, just to get them to the capacity of where they need to be. And so they have this 40% rule, whereas it's not just a rule that they came up with, but scientifically, they understand that once you are at a point, place of being tired or fatigued, that you have only reached 40% of your physical capacity. Yes. Once you feel an inkling of being tired, once you feel an inkling of exhaustion, there is only 40% of your physical capacity that you have used, meaning that you have 60% more of your capacity that you can and able to use. Isn't that interesting? So it's all about how we perceive in our mind what it is that we can do. Things of this nature can only be done when we take the limits off ourselves. When we take the limits off ourselves. I come to tell myself, if anyone can do it, anyone can do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anyone can do it, anyone can do it. So if they are able to reach more than that 40% capacity and then go all the way to 100% capacity, I'm able to do it. I don't have to be a Navy SEAL to make this understanding that I can do more than what I feel that I'm capable of doing. I know 2020 has been rough for a lot of us. 2020 has taken away a lot of us, a lot of our energy, a lot of our time, a lot of our loved ones as well. But there is more for each of us to accomplish. There is more for each of us to do. Um, I won't be much longer, even though I have a little bit of time. But I would like to share practical ways of how to build our self-image and re-narrate self-talk that can help our self-awareness as well. First, we must change we must change our self-concept. If we can't change it, we got the, if you feel like, oh, you know what, I think I'm doing okay, well, then you can upgrade it, okay? We can upgrade our self-concept, our self-thoughts. So with our self-concept, there is subsets, such as self-image. Our self-image is the view that you have on yourself. And then there's also self-esteem or self-worth. This is how much you value or place value on yourself. Then there's this idea self. Remember I said, um, ideally, I would like to run several marathons. I would like to. So that's an ideal self. What you wish you were really 
You know, these are all things of con uh, self-concepts that we um, can establish because these subsets, um, they are something that goes within our self-concept, okay? So self-image, self-image, our self-image, our self-awareness is the key ingredient to high performance. It's the key ingredient to high performance. Why? We only behave. We only behave or perform based on how we see ourselves. How we see ourselves is, is how high we're going to go. What do I mean? You know. If you heard me by now, you know I got another story for you. So there is a story of Jason Silk. He is a performance coach. And he says that uh, many times we should can compare ourselves to uh, our self our self image to a thermostat he said because with a thermostat um, a, is let's say if we set our thermostat to 75 degrees in our homes okay we say you know what this is where I'm gonna set this thermostat at I like it I like how I feel right here I like this space Okay, he said, so if you set your thermostat to 75 degrees and then the room drops to 72 degrees, the thermostat sends a message to the heater say, hey, 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 now you got to do some work. You got to build up because I'm, I set the thermostat at 75 degrees. So I expect this room to be what? 75 degrees. Now, if the temperature in the room drops, to 72 degrees. It, it, no, let's say the temperature drops um, to 72 degrees, then the thermostat is going to tell the heater, hey, you need to stop working. You need to bring, bring. you know what, that's, hey, it's going a little too, too low. No, if it goes 72 degrees, you tell them that you need to work, speed it up. Okay, you need to come up to where you need to be, which is 75 degrees. And then if it's too, if it gets too high, like 76 degrees, then the thermostat is going to tell the heater, hey, you need to stop working. You, you're going above, too, too high. And so with, it's the same with our self-image. Wherever we set ourselves at, that is exactly where we're going to go. So what does the thermostat do? All day long, the thermostat, the thermostat it guards and governs the temperature, the rise and the drop of the room. So I must ask another question. Where have you set your self-image? Where have you set your self-image, okay? Where have you told yourself, this is as far as I'm going to go? Now, you may not thought that you told yourself or put a limit on yourself, but a lot of times we have because sometimes we feel like I may not be that smart or I can't do this or I'm only able to do this. I remember when I first started exercising and then I would tell the, the, the trainer, look, I can't do no more. I got to stop. And she would say, it's all in your head. It's all in your mind. Keep pushing. You got this. And so one thing I've come to understand that your identity precedes your activity. Where you identify yourself going is where you will go because your identity precedes your activity. Your identity precedes your activity. So what am I saying about self-image? Self-image change and if it is not supported about where you want to go, you won't go there. So know that our self-image changes. And if it is not supporting where you want to be right now or where you're trying to go, listen, it is time to change it. I heard about an 18-40-60 rule. Now, this 18-40-60 rule is coined by Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Daniel Amen, he tells us that human beings think about others at different stages of life. Now, two of these stages I have been through. Um, it says when you're 18 years old, you think about what everybody in the world think about you. You wondering like, oh, I wonder what they said about me. I wonder how they feel about me. I wonder what's going on with this. I wonder what's going on with that. And then when you're 40 years old, 
you don't give a darn what anybody thinks. Now, I done, I done felt the 18-year-old, and I was concerned about what everybody said. Then, baby, once I turned 40, it's like, listen, think what you want to, feel what you want to. I'm good. I love who I am. I love what I am, and I love who I've become. I've reached that. I'm 43. And then there's this place that, oh, my God. They say you get to when you turn 60 years old, you realize that one nobody thinking about you all alone. <laughs> I said, you realize old and age, wasn't nobody thinking about you. It was all in your head. It was all in, in your mind. Anyway, before giving that scenario, I was talking about change, and I was talking about setting your own thermostat. And you asked me how. I know this is virtual, and so I know in my head, I heard you ask me, how do I change that? And I'm glad you asked, but it starts with mental training, mental training. I'm known as a mind mentor. I understand and I realize that so many things start with the mind. The mind is the manifestation of your thoughts, of your perception, of your emotions, determination, memory, imagination that take place in your mind, which is located in your brain. Um, I remember also reading a story about Lanny. Um, it was Lanny Bassam, I believe. And he was an Olympic gold medalist. And he wrote the book um, With Winning in Mind. He wrote a book called With Winning in Mind. And with this book, he asked, he asked a lot of PGA um, Tour pros. He asked a lot of his fellow Olympians who were, who were great at what they did. He said, what was the secret to your high performance? What was the secret to why you were able to perform at such a level? And everyone, almost at least 90% of these people asked and answered. They said it was the mental game. It was the mental game. It was the mental game. They said they were able to see it in their mind and they were able to achieve it. So let's start with mental rehearsal. What is mental rehearsal? This is not like vision boards. Even though I love vision boards and we know that so many of us are going to have vision board parties this year if we not have if we have not had them already. But vision boards are what we the outcomes uh we we put on there. I want this. I want this trip. I want this to come to pass. It's outcomes of stuff that we want or it's stuff that we already may have achieved that we just excited about it. But when I talk about mental rehearsal, rehearsing um, rehearsing the process of taking action. So you're replaying in your mind the action steps that you must take. I must take action towards getting these results. So you mentally rehearse performing tasks in the most effective way and you see yourself perfecting these moves and these tasks and succeeding in the way that you thought of it in your mind, the actions that you took in your mind. Have anyone seen the movie Queen's Gambit, which was on Netflix? That was a movie I really, really loved. And it was about this little girl who played chess really, really well. She was taught by the janitor. She was in this orphanage and she went down to the to um, to the basement and the janitor was playing chess you know, by herself, pretty much playing chess. And so she asked, well, can you teach me? Um, after teaching her a few of the concepts of what chess was, she began to visualize moves um, before she took them. And not only her moves, but her opponent moves. And so she pl played out the whole game in her mind before the game was even played. And she was able to become this great champion all across the world because of her ability in her mind to take the steps and the actions before she even got to that place. So we start rehearsing our actions in our mind. And so even with rehearsing those actions in our mind, we must also add a personal statement with it, saying, I'm best at accomplishing this task. I'm great at doing this. And I guarantee you those things will happen. I remember 
growing up, I used to always tell my siblings that I was my father's favorite child. Now, I don't know if I was my father's favorite child. However, because I continue to say it, I think they all believed it and he believed it as well. Now, we don't know how true it is, but it was something that I placed in my mind. Even when I think of certain issues that I have physically, you know, with my health, there are certain things that, um, or, or sicknesses that I have come across, whereas I told myself, no, this is not going to overtake me. And mentally, I was able to heal myself. And so what I'm saying is a person can take action and achieve goals in their mind before they even accomplish it. So a lot of the things that I say to myself, I say, if my mind sees it, I can achieve it. So let me tell you one more story before I get out of here. And because I know it is so fitting about what it is that I'm sharing with us being aware of who we are and of being aware of what's on the inside of us. So um, there's a story about, um, I got to think of it. Uh, there's a story about Richard. Uh, Richard Branson, I wrote it down in my notes. Richard Branson was a businessman, and he operates about 400 businesses under his brand, Virgin Group. And his business range from music brands to um, telecom, airlines, commercial space lines, all kind of things. But he has this quote that he says, take action before you're ready. I love it. Take action before you're ready. Now, where did that come from? In 1970, Richard was on his way to some meeting that he really, really needed to get to. But he was in the United States, and he was stuck at the airport. Now, what happened was they delayed his flight, and no one was able to get to their destination they had delayed the flight to the next day, but he knew he needed to be where he needed to be. What ended up happening was everyone around him was complaining about one person had to get to a wedding, another person had to get to this meeting, another person was complaining about they needed to go here or they needed to go there. And what did Richard do? He said, I'm not going to take part of these complaining. I'm going to think about what it is that I need to do. So he got himself up. He called a, a charter, a, a charter. And what he did was, he, now he know he really didn't have the money, but he said, look, I'm going to take this action. He called a, cha a charter and booked the charter. And then he went to all those people that was around him that was complaining where they needed to go. And he said, listen, for a higher price, I have a private charter that you can take. Now, how many know most of those people decided to pay that higher price that he was charging so they can get to the, the destination that they was going? What am I saying? He did not spend his time looking on what the outside, the airlines, the, uh, the United States airline was doing. He said, let me go with them myself and make some connections and think about what it is that I can do so I can get to where I need to get to. And so in this incident, after this incident, he was able and inspired to set up Virgin Atlantic Airlines. And he has this famous quote that I said before. He said, take action before you're ready. So I want to leave you with uh, a key formula that I came up with, with is mind, the mind formula. And this is to boost self-awareness. So what do I say? First, you should meditate day and night with gratitude, okay? Meditate day and night with gratitude where you see yourself going, where you want to live, how you want to look. And then I, I'm also saying how you run your day. Either you run your day or your day run you. So you must take meditation. Take your day and night as meditation to clean out your think tank. You must clean out your think tank. So when problems arise and you lack um, clarity, when you meditate, you bring your thoughts into subjection and say, look, I'm going to think clear because I, when I think clear, I can make the best decisions and I can take actions even faster, okay? 
So the next thing we do is intercept. Intercept negative thoughts and statements. Once these negative thoughts come to tell you what you can't do, what you can't, you can't do this, you can't do that, you want to intercept those thoughts. You want to say, no, nah, this thoughts is not coming my way because we are, every single day, we are bombarded with sixty to 90,000 thoughts a day. And usually 95% of those thoughts are the same that we had yesterday. So we want to intercept negative thoughts. Anything that's coming that's negative, we want to intercept, get them out the way because we want to think the best about ourselves in every step of the way. And if you have a negative thought, apologize to yourself and say, no, you're not thinking this way. We're going to think better. After you do the intercept and you intercept negative thoughts, you want to nurture some great affirmations. Nurture your mind with positive affirmations. Say, I can, I will, I must succeed at all things. And you will succeed at all things. The last and final thing is to drive. Drive towards this new identity. Drive towards this new mental state. Drive towards new opportunities with passion. Know that you have what is inside of yourself to be all that you need to be. Women, I am saying, are you glowing? Are you growing? Are you ready to go? Look at yourself and say, girl, you is glowing. Why? Because there is something on the inside of you that you are birthing. There is something on the inside of you that is growing. So I want to leave you with this quote from Gandhi. And he says, if I have the belief that I can do it, I shall surely acquire the capacity to do it, even if I may not have it at the beginning. So even if there are some things that you know you do not have, know that you have the capacity to grow and glow. Thank you for joining me.